The new S-Class, the new luxury, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Datin Sri Rosmah Manso's lawyers have decided not to call her husband, Dato Sri Najib Razak, to testify as a defence witness in her solar hybrid graft trial. This is despite the fact that the former Premier's 65-page witness statement was already tendered in court. As Najib will not be testifying, the witness statement would not be used as part of the court's records. Defence counsel Datuk Jagjit Singh told High Court Judge Muhammad Zaini Mazlan today that this is because Najib's evidence is primarily corroborative in nature. He apologised to Justice Zaini for announcing the decision just before the start of the proceedings today. Jagjit said the court would have to wait until February 4th, where former First Lady of Malaysia Department head Datuk Sri Siti Aziza Sheikh Abud will be cross-examined. This is because she is presently performing her umrah. Rosmah's money laundering trial, which Justice Zaini is also presiding over, is still slated to begin on Wednesday. After a delay in opening Gunting Skywalls, Gunting Malaysia is now ironing out software issues and hopes to open the outdoor theme park for this coming Chinese New Year. This is according to Maybank Investments Bank analyst Yin Xiaoyang, whose channel checks also revealed that Resorts World Gunting's or RWG's fourth quarter 21 visitorship was robust despite another delay of Gunting Skywalls opening. According to Yin, RWG's fourth quarter 21 visitorship was comparable to the third quarter of 2020, which was at 4 million thanks to a high vaccination rate and the easing in the number of new COVID-19 cases and deaths in Malaysia. Yin said other indicators show that the upcoming Chinese New Year will be a good one for the Genting unit if the Omicron variant is kept at bay. Citing the Google Mobility Retail and Recreation Index, he said Malaysians are a lot more comfortable being outdoors. He also cited Google Trends, which indicates that RWG is front of mind for many Malaysians during holidays. He revised Upgunting's FY21 earnings estimates by 2%, with loss before interest and tax to narrow by 51 million ringgit. Yen kept his buy call on the stock and lowered the target price to 3 ringgit 38 sen from 3 ringgit 40 sen. At the close, Gunting was down 0.35% to 2 ringgit 88 sen, valuing the group at 17.16 billion ringgit. A researcher in Cyprus has discovered a COVID-19 strain that combines the Delta and Omicron variants. Bloomberg News reported over the weekend that Leondias Kostrikis, a professor of biological sciences at the University of Cyprus, whose team identified 25 such cases, called the strain Deltacron. It said the discovery was named Deltacron because of its Omicron-like genetic signatures within the Delta genomes. However, the report said that it was still too early to tell if there were more such cases or what impact it could have. The professor also reportedly said, although it was not yet known how infectious or pathological the combined strain was, it would likely be displaced by the Omicron variant. Other scientists have, however, speculated that Kostrikis' findings were a result of laboratory contamination. The Cypriot vehemently denied this and said in an emailed statement to Bloomberg that the cases he had identified indicate an evolutionary pressure to an ancestral strain to acquire these mutations and not a result of a single recombination event. Human Resources Minister Datuk Sri M. Sarawanan says Malaysia and Indonesia are expected to sign an MOU on the recruitment and placement of Indonesian domestic helpers in the first week of February. He said the two nations are now in the final stages of talks, including the overall cost of bringing in maids. The minister said the government is looking at containing the cost to between 10,000 ringgit and 15,000 ringgit, including quarantine costs and levies. Malaysia 
Malaysia and Indonesia signed the MOU for the first time on May 13, 2006 in Bali. And following that, the protocol to amend the MOU was inked on May 31, 2011 in Bandung, which then expired on May 30, 2016. Sarawanan said Jakarta had also asked that Malaysia stop its practice of hiring Indonesian nationals who first come to the country as tourists, as the Indonesian government sees this as forced labour. Sarawanan said he will discuss the issue with Home Minister Datuk Sri Hamza Zainuddin. Furniture manufacturer and ACE market debutant Ecomate Holdings reported a net profit of 2.62 million ringgit for its third quarter of FY22, a 245.13% improvement from its net loss in its immediate preceding quarter of 1.81 million ringgit. Revenue for the quarter stood at 15.68 million ringgit, a 142.87% increase from its second quarter FY22 top line. The higher earnings were mainly due to the increase in revenue, as it saw higher sales from customers located in Malaysia. The company listed just two months ago on November 8. On its current financial year prospects, Ecomate said the principal geographical areas that it operates in, namely Asia, North America, Australasia and Europe, are highly sensitive to macroeconomic factors, particularly the general economy and uncertainties surrounding the future economic prospects of the countries it exports to. It expects its FY22 outlook to be challenging. At the close, Ecomate was 4.7% lower at 50.5 sen, giving it a market capital of 176.75 million ringgit. This program was brought to you by Mercedes-Benz.